Hey, I'm David from Coding is for Losers, and welcome to a special OK Dork edition. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with CIFL, uh, we teach how you can use Google Sheets combined with code-free automation tools like Zapier, Supermetrics, and Blockspring to save time in your work. Uh, so when Noah asked me to publish some of my favorite Google Sheets hacks on OK Dork, uh, I didn't just reach into the Trello vault that, that we keep at CIFL and publish some of this, the warmed over stuff that we've already put out there. Uh, I actually reached out to many of my friends in the startup community and gathered some of the best Google Sheets hacks that I could find that are really happening out in the wild um, so that we could share them with you and you could copy them. Uh, so what I found companies are doing and, and what I wanted to share with you is they're doing stuff like managing uh, huge freelance uh, writing and editorial teams from Google Sheets. They're tracking uh, hundreds of affiliate campaigns from within Google Sheets and, and stuff like that, really managing larger infrastructure than I personally thought Google Sheets was even good for. Um, so the link at the bottom of this video uh, to the Trello vault will allow you to copy all of these process templates. But let's dive into what they're actually doing and, and what tools you can put together to, uh, to copy their processes and, and you know, make huge time-saving wins for your business. This temple is inspired by the team at Kettle and Fire, who produce a, a bone broth product that they sell online. And they primarily promote it through a large affiliate network that they've built of paleo and fitness bloggers who love their product and want to promote it. Um, so the challenge comes in is if you have 100 people, 100 different campaigns running like that, uh, how do you track the relative performance of them and identify opportunities to improve the funnel throughout? So whether you're looking at the visit to checkout page uh, conversion rate or the checkout to ultimately purchasing the product conversion rate um, or the, the order size, the average order size, um, it breaks down this template all of those individual steps of the funnel so you can be more systematic about improving each of the funnel steps one by one um, versus just being confused about what's happening across your, your affiliate network. Um, so the tools in use for this template are Zapier to pull in all of your order data um, and also Supermetrics to pull in all of your Google Analytics uh, page, page view data to your checkout page and also to your landing pages further up the funnel. Um, so those are the tools. Really what the output looks like for this template is a dashboard and it aggregates all of your data across each of those funnels, um, builds the funnel metric stack, like the conversion rates and the average order size and revenue, all of that stuff. Um, so it produces a dashboard where you can compare your campaigns and also look at a monthly history. Um, but more importantly, it just aggregates this data in one place. You could push it up to a different dashboard if you have like, use like a gecko board or something like that. Um, the data wrangling is really the, the big lift here. Um, so who should use this template? Uh, if you're selling a product online and running a number of campaigns to promote it, uh, I would say that this template is for you. Um, and really the results from this template, not, not this exact template, but by using this process, and then we cleaned it up a little bit to publish, um, Kettle and Fire was able to boost their visit to paid conversion rate from 3% to 8% in about five months. And that's just by looking at the individual steps in the funnel um, and seeing where can they take action? Where can they change the UX, the copywriting, the design? Where can they uh, recruit different types of affiliates um, and really getting into the nitty gritty? This template is inspired by the, the content teams over at Zapier and Zozi, um, who both managed pretty similar content production pipelines using Google Sheets and Google Forms. Um, so the main challenge with content is coordination. Uh, if you're managing a distributed team of 20 or even more freelance writers and editors, 
um, just staying on the same page with when stuff's supposed to post, what the URL slug should be, um, and stuff like that. There's a big, big coordination burden and a high cost of, of screwing these things up. Um, so what this template does, and it pulls elements from both Zapier's process, and thanks to Matt for sharing this, the foundation for this template, and also the, uh, the landing page production process over at Zozi, helps you really stay on top of that coordination. Um, and the tools that it uses to do that, other than Google Sheets, obviously, um, it uses Google Forms to push new content ideas into the editorial calendar so that you have a, a, a distinct way of submitting new ideas and getting them on the board. Um, and then it uses Zapier to do a few things, to push approved posts up to WordPress if you're using WordPress, um, to log those, those actually published posts back to your editorial calendar, um, and also to push published dates to Google Calendar events so you can look at your calendar and see when things should be going live. Um, really the final output of this template is an editorial calendar. Um, it's an automated editorial calendar that you can, can look at and, and pay attention to one thing across your entire team. Um, and who should really be using this? I would say this is for anyone who's managing a distributed content team where you have a number of different contributors and want to stay on top of it. Um, and in terms of, of action you can take, this is not one of those templates where it, it allows you to do something that you couldn't do otherwise. Obviously, there's a number of different ways to manage an editorial process. What this template is all about is saving time in, in doing kind of grunt work of coordination. So you can spend that time on higher value work. For example, for content, um, focusing on writing higher quality content, spending more time giving feedback to your writers and editors um, versus just, you know, kind of keeping the pipeline moving along. So all of us love doing, doing that higher value work. This template's inspired by the team at Coach, and Coach is a online platform for people to sell uh, courses and other digital products. Um, and Coach's main challenge is that they have a really diverse user base. Uh, they have everyone from uh, programming coaches to love coaches uh, using their product to, to sell stuff. Uh, so their challenge is, since content was really one of their main acquisition channels, how do you write content for really diverse user base um, that may not have the same kind of like underlying problems that they're looking for help with. Um, so what Coach did, and I helped them build this template, was uh, build their own kind of in-house social listening tool. Um, because most social listening tools have two problems. They don't backfill data, so you have to wait for them to accumulate data, so it limits your agility. Um, and they limit your number of feeds. So if you have 20 different personas with five different search terms each, uh, that's gonna be really expensive if you're using kind of a classic social listening tool. So what this template does is it pulls in Twitter data and Reddit posts um, for a number of search terms and hashtags and kind of kickstarts your, your content research efforts when you're looking at a new, uh, whole new user persona. Um, so like I said, the services it uses, it pulls in Twitter data using BlockSpring. You could also use Supermetrics or Zapier if those are your thing, both, both work with Twitter. Um, and it also uses the Google Sheets import XML function, which I really love, um, to pull in uh, RSS feeds from subreddits. Um, and the output of this is really, it pulls the top mentioned users on Twitter, so you can get a feel for like who are the influencers here. Uh, the top mentioned posts, uh, so you can see like, okay, what's what's trending amongst this group of people? Um, and yeah, really the, the forum posts that matches up with your search terms so that you can really quickly go in, spend 15 minutes a day and know, okay, what, what research should I do today? What posts should I look at that are important to these people so that I can understand what you should be writing for them? Um, so I'd say... Anyone who's running content strategy or social media strategy um, at a startup and you don't 
have a great feel for exactly the type of content that resonates with your users, say you're just starting out, um, this is a really good place to start and, and kickstart your research. Um, like I said, the end result will be you'll be able to tune your content strategy to what you know is actually already resonating uh, out there online and, and not be guessing about what type of content to be writing. This content audit template was inspired by Ryan Stewart of Webris, which is a startup digital agency based in Miami. Um, and they've been really at the forefront of adopting Google Sheets automation as part of their business. Um, so one of the first things that they do when they work with a new client is try and get a feel for how are the site's existing pages uh, performing. Um, you know, their goal is to boost organic traffic for a client. So they want to understand which pages are really high performing and they should focus on upgrading and putting more weight behind those and which pages are complete dogs that aren't delivering any organic traffic or picking up any links that they should go ahead and delete. Um, so they needed a content audit process to manage all of the data wrangling because um, SEO audits are very data heavy. Um, and I helped build this template with them. So let's talk about it. Uh, basically the challenge, like I said, is data aggregation. So the services uh, that this pulls data together from are Google Analytics using Supermetrics, um, manual exports from tools like Ahrefs or Moz, uh, for example, that don't readily have, you can't readily pull the data from an API, so you have to manually process the export. So this template handles that. Um, and it uses the Google Sheets import XML function to pull in all of your sitemaps. So first you pull in all of your pages, then you put together um, engagement and bounce rate data and traffic from Google Analytics. You put together link data from something like Ahrefs or Moz, and then you can start to work on the logic. Um, so the output of this is really a big table that contains every page on your site, uh, pulls together all that data I just mentioned, and then outputs a suggested next step for the page. So if a page has no organic traffic and no inbound links, then it's not delivering any SEO value for the site and you should delete it unless it's serving some other purpose. Um, similarly, if, uh, if a page is performing highly, then you know, say it has a, a bunch of organic traffic and a lot of inbound links, you should focus on, on upgrading that page. Um, so I would say who can benefit from this template? It's really anyone who's, if you're starting to work with a new site, uh, you personally are, are taking on the project, but the site's been going for a while, say six months or a year of history, um, and it might've accumulated pages that aren't necessary or uh, it may have kind of varied results throughout the site. This will help you get a feel for where you're currently at. Um, so what does this allow Ryan and his team to really do? Um, I would say the biggest win is it allows them to focus on higher value activities, like deciding what are they actually gonna do with these pages that are performing well um, versus spending all of the time uh, just wrangling uh, data. So it allows them to get deeper into their work. And that's all. If you're ready to dive right into the templates, uh, you can grab all of them from the Trello vault linked to beneath this video. Um, each template contains a getting started tab that walks you through the setup in a more detailed way and contains tests to make sure you're, you're actually getting set up correctly. Um, so if you have any questions as you dive into them, um, feel free to holler to at losershq on Twitter. Take care.